Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. This is love. This is where love is highlighted in this song. One of the beautiful things of the Christmas season of Advent is that God comes to us. And he meets us in our waiting. He meets us in our longing. From our fears and sins, release us. Let us find our rest or our peace in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. There's hope. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. And as you sing that song, as you sing other traditional Christmas songs and new ones that have come out since, you're gonna notice these four themes communicated as we declare our coming King, as we celebrate this Advent season. So today we're gonna focus on hope. We're gonna focus on the reality that in Christ, we have hope. And here's what I want you to understand. And this is kind of the big idea for today is that while no one wants to wait, we all want hope. And when we focus on Jesus, our wait becomes hope. When you focus on Jesus, your seasons of waiting become reasons for hope. Think about this way. When you're in a season of waiting, usually your posture is kind of like worried. You're wringing your hands, like your, your brow is furrowed. You know, you're not sure what's coming, but you want something to change. But when you hope, your posture changes. When you hope, it's like there's a smile on your face and there's anticipation in your heart for something good that's coming your way, even if it's not today. And I want to talk about how we access that during the Advent season. So the word Advent is actually Latin, comes from the Latin word Adventus, okay, Adventus. You're going to get a little bit of a history lesson today, um, and hopefully you enjoy that and lean into that with me. The word Adventus means coming or arrival, the coming of or the arrival of redemption. This is the first Advent that Advent season highlights. In Latin, it is the Adventus Redemptionis. This speaks to Jesus's birth, the coming redemption that's prophesied all through scripture and then realized when Jesus is born to Mary and Joseph. There's another one that I want us to point to. And this is the second advent that this season really points to. This is the coming in glory or the arrival of glory or in Latin, the Adventus glorificamus. This is Jesus's second coming. This is Jesus' second coming, okay? Jesus talked about this in several places, but one of the more obvious ones is Acts chapter one, just before Jesus floated into heaven. He has this conversation with his disciples in Acts chapter one, verse six. And they gathered around him and they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus says to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. So Jesus literally floated up into heaven. Imagine what the disciples felt on that moment. Like their savior, they gave up everything for him. He dies on a cross and I'm sure at times, and we know this from scriptures, they were like, geez, not what we expected, right? But then he comes back and it's like, okay, okay. We're all back together again, bands back together again. We're gonna do this. Let's set up the kingdom of Israel. Wait, hold, wait, hold, hold. like, where are you going? Like, come up, come back down. Like somebody wanted a string to put on his foot and pull him down, I'm sure. Like, like we still have work to do. And then it says, they were looking intently up into the sky. And as he was going, two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? And here it is. The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. He will come back again. The second coming the return of Jesus. He says to his disciples right here, it's not for you to know the times or the dates, but clearly he wants them to know the season. This is what Jesus is wanting us to do. Not be scared, but prepared. So in our day, in our time, because of recent events, a lot of people are asking this question, will Jesus return soon? And so I'm gonna attempt to speak into that here. Zechariah chapter 14 ancient prophecy. A day of the Lord is coming. And the Bible talks a lot about the day of the Lord. We know, meaning there will come a time when life as we know it will come to an end. And not like everything's just going to be burned up and no longer exists. Some people think that. That actually scripture is really clear. Jesus is coming to make all things new and restore all things. 
And that time is known the day of the Lord. It's coming in Jerusalem, it says, when your possessions will be plundered and divided up within your very walls. And that's happened in Jerusalem throughout the centuries. But this is the, the line that catches people's attention right now. And I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. And then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations. And on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem. Every day is about one thing. Jesus is waiting one more day for one more person to have one more chance. 